closed. Go ahead, breathe out and empty your mind and just be. From within that silence, greet the Divine Mother. Greet Swamiji and greet each other. In that silence, we are all one. In absolutely true sense.
Narayan the most beautiful. So as I was saying, the, in that silence, we're all one. It's like the ocean with many waves on top, but on the bottom, it's all that same still deep ocean. On the top, there could be small waves, big waves, rough waves, tsunami waves, all kind of waves, all different forms. You can name them differently also. So the, so this, this entire world of names and forms, know for a fact that there is, there is a silent foundation upon which this entire manifestation arises. The entire manifestation is Shakti, is the Divine Mother, and the deep water, the, the still water, is the Shiva. And every wave that rises, is Shiva Shakti combination. So everything that you see around you, including your own self, know for a fact the manifestation that you see is the Divine Mother. And the silence, the foundation upon which everything appears to be, is Lord Shiva. Nothing is an illusion. Divine Mother is as real as Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva exists as much as the Divine Mother exists. So if you say only the manifestation is true, then you are negating the presence of Lord Shiva. If you say all oh, this is an illusion, there is only one truth, then you are negating the presence of Divine Mother. They both exist equally. That is the Ardhana Rishwar Swarup of the Samba Shiva, which is Sa Amba Shiva. Amba ke Sahit Parmeshwar or Lord Shiva. Or Lord Shiva along with the Divine Mother. So last week, the practice that we did of centering ourselves was to get introduced to Lord Shiva. Or was to feel the presence of Lord Shiva. Be beyond this manifestation. So today, and it's not like, you know, we are negating anything, basically. The mind is also a manifestation arising from the deep ocean, from Lord Shiva, from that pure consciousness a ray of light that emerges out is the mind. So we are not here to just negate the presence of the mind also. Sarvam Brahma Mayam Isha Vashyam Idam Sarvam Everything is Ishwar. Everything is Paramatma. Everything is the Divine Mother. In our mind, in our intellect, we are creating a distinction that the deep ocean is Lord Shiva and the manifestation is the Divine Mother. Which in fact, if you see, every wave that rises in the ocean, every drop of it is the ocean itself. So just for the sake of understanding, we are creating this distinction. But truly there is no distinction between Shiva and Shakti. There is no distinction. They are indeed one and the same. One of my friends yesterday, I was talking to him and he said, Anu, you have acquired a lot of, you have gained a lot of wisdom. He was like, it's like a fountain of wisdom has let loose within you. And then I started thinking about it. I said, <clears throat> so I have gained a lot of wisdom. So can I really summarize, you know, can I really give you a bottom line of this wisdom that he thinks I have, I have. And I also believe that I have this, this fountain of wisdom and I'm going to give you the bottom line of this wisdom that I have gained. The first thing, Divine Mother is the ultimate refuge. 
she is the ultimate refuge and second to lead this life i need her refuge i need her guidance in absolute true sincerity i really don't know anything else but these two things i know for a fact so whatever he meant to say is what he meant to say but i truly feel if i have wisdom if anyone thinks i have wisdom i have given it to you divine mother is the ultimate refuge and to lead this life to get constant guidance you need her refuge you need her apart from this i truly don't know anything as i lead my life as life opens up moment to moment i depend on her guidance for every little thing for every little thing from picking fruits to making life decisions i depend on her that is the ultimate knowledge that i have but i i need not depend on my mind and my intellect for anything mother is there lovingly guiding me in at every stage of my life at every moment of my life so again for the sake of the discussion we are going to divide a few things let us take a deep breath and again center ourselves that which that which is in me that reminds me to constantly center myself is my vivek is my intellect and when i say me it is the pure awareness so let us let us understand this with an example let's say i have two friends and one of them is always at peace always guiding me towards my spiritual life and then i have another friend always wanting to pull me into the materialistic world the one who does who does who wants to pull me into the materialistic world has certain characteristics she is ever greedy never content and wants me to go for more she wants me to eat more she wants me to shop more she wants me to talk more she wants me to indulge more she wants me to do everything in an exaggerated way and it is just simply which friend am i preferring more the other friend i meet every so often not so much and every time i meet the other friend i feel at peace but then this other friend i have gotten used to being with so much so my materialistic friend calls me every day texts me every day wants to be with me wants to talk to me wants to go shopping with me wants to go to the restaurants with me she wants to hang out with me whereas the other the satvik friend wants to just be there wants me to know she is always there for me so the more i hang out with my materialistic friend obviously the more materialistic i'll get right the more i hang out with my satvik friend the more satvik i'll get so then let's say one fine day i wake up and i say you know what enough of this materialistic life i really want to lead a more spiritual life so then i start i call my spiritual friend and i said you know let's let's meet up let's talk more she's like sure let's talk more but remember i have already gotten used to spending la- spending my time with the materialistic friend so it's not like the materialistic friend will just stop will quit on me she will continue to call me text me hey what happened are we meeting up are we going out for lunch are we meeting for shopping are we doing this constantly she will try to text me call me first few phone calls i'll be like all right yeah i'll do it 
But then inside, I really don't want to do it. But then I'm like, you know what? That's fine. She's going to feel bad. Let me just go. So one lunch I go, one shopping I go. And then she said, okay, let's meet up in the evening because I want to show you something new stuff that I got. And you really want to say, you know what? No, I'm meeting my Satvik friend, but somehow you're dragged in. So you half-heartedly, you're just getting involved. And you're like, wow, this is really good stuff. Where did you buy it from? Oh, you bought it from here? Maybe I'll go there tomorrow. You know, you have these drittis rising in you. And then again, one part of you says, no, I really need to lead a spiritual life. I want to meet my spiritual friend. <clears throat> so the next day you make up your mind. Today I'm going to spend more time with my spiritual friend. So here you are spending time with your spiritual friend. While you are spending time with your spiritual friend, your phone is buzzing constantly because your friend is like texting you, calling you. Come on, where are you? Let's go ahead. Meet up for lunch. Let's go out. Let's go shopping. And then you're trying to ignore those phone calls, trying to be with the sattvic friend, but you're not able to be with the sattvic friend because the pull from the materialistic friend is pretty, pretty strong. This goes on and you slowly start ignoring your materialistic friend. And the materialistic friend gets it. She's like, okay, this person is ignoring me. I really need to get back because this is the only friendship I have. So then, you know, it's, it starts again. So the friend is calling, texting, you're with the sattvic friend or the spiritual friend. And slowly, you know, slowly you're spending more time with your spiritual friend and your materialistic friend, you're, just, you're not meeting as often because you're coming up with good reasons. Oh, I'm busy today. I'll meet up on the weekend. I'm busy tomorrow. I'm doing something. I have some stuff with family. I'm busy with work. So the friend is realizing that you're starting to ignore. And then slowly, you start to spend more time with the spiritual friend and the materialistic friend really gets ignored a lot. Then one fine day, you get a text from the materialistic friend. Hey, listen, I know you're busy. I know it's... I, I get it. You're busy with family, with work, with friends, whatever. Listen, I just had a question for you. So then you're like, okay, what is the question? You've ignored her all this time, but you're like, what is the question? So the friend is like, oh, the question is, she'll come up with some smart question that will get you involved. So you're like texting back and forth. Okay, it is this. And now the materialistic friend kind of has crept back in. And you're like, okay, so what are you doing nowadays? You know, listen, I'm trying to lead a very spiritual life, this and that. Oh, okay, that's great. Tell me more about the spiritual life, you know. Why do you have to pray? Why do you have to do this? I mean, do you really think Divine Mother exists? And then you start answering all these questions. But really, the materialistic friend's goal is get her involved with me. I just want her to be on my side, either through questions or whatever. Who cares? I just want her by my side. So then the materialistic friend says, this is great information you know you're giving me. Why don't we meet up for lunch and then we can talk over this? You're like, okay, let's, let's, let's do that. And then you're meeting up for lunch and then slowly more, more food. And then she's like, oh, why don't we go here? Let's check out the quick sales. And you're slowly dragged in. And then the materialistic friend is like, okay, now I'm back in action. But then your spiritual friend is kind enough to guide you saying, no, don't go that way. You've come a long way. Don't go that way. Then again, the ignoring begins. You ignore that materialistic friend for a while. And then one day, the materialistic friend again messages you saying, I'm feeling really low today. I'm very sad. You know, the friend uses the emotions card. I'm really feeling sad. You know, I really feel this way or that way. And then you're, you're like, oh, what happened? And then you're back again. So then the materialistic friend is back again. Then the spiritual friend is like, no, don't go that way. We've already gone this, this route. So this, this constant, you know, pulling keeps happening until I completely make up my mind that, you know what, hanging out with my materialistic friend is only going to make me materialistic. Her presence always brings restlessness within me. She always talks about other people and what they have and what I don't have. She makes me feel jealous. She makes me resent other people's success. That is not how I want to be. I want to be at peace with holding love in my heart, keeping everything at peace. This is how I want to be. So once I make up that mind, I start ignoring this friend. 
so much so that no questions from her are entertained if she is feeling sad if she is feeling depressed so be it i have no time for it just ignore be completely with my spiritual friend so although you know this story is you're know, like we're not kindergarten kids here you're telling us the story but this is exactly this is exactly how the mind and the intellect play intellect is the first gift given by the divine mother to us when i say us when i say you when i say me i don't mean this physical body i mean the awareness that we are we all have experienced what that awareness what that silence feels like let's go ahead empty our mind and silence ourselves that is your true nature you're just aware for a second become aware of your body then become aware of where wherever you are whichever room you are in your surroundings just become aware you don't need to know everything just become aware where you're sitting then become aware of what your mind is doing that state right now is called super consciousness in the state of super consciousness you are aware of your surroundings and you are aware of your mind and you are just aware that is the state of super consciousness so who you truly are is that pure awareness although because of association with the mind the awareness cannot be by itself so think about awareness like me so i am pure awareness and i have two friends the intellect and the mind i have engaged with the mind so much not just this lifetime but so many millions of lifetimes before this that i almost feel like the mind and my awareness are one i'm one with the mind hence if the mind feels sad i say i'm sad if the mind feels happy i say i'm happy if the mind feels jealous i say i'm jealous that is not true I am the pure awareness. I have a mind and I have a intellect. The intellect is that spiritual friend that constantly speaks and says, "Listen, your refuge is the divine mother. Don't get don't associate with the mind too much. The mind is your your servant." it's supposed to carry out all your worldly duties for you don't become the mind that's the intellect telling me but i have completely meshed up i'm completely merged with the mind so there is no distinction so last week what we did the centering exercise and if you have truly practiced it with your heart there there's already a little distance that's created between you your true self and your mind and then this week what you're going to practice is what i did with my materialistic friend ignoring remember when you first start ignoring the mind it will come back with questions very great questions you will be like wow this question demands swamiji's attention right away because it is such a great question no matter what the question no the friend is trying to come back if you ignore the mind a little longer then it will come back with emotions i'm feeling this way i'm feeling that way remember everything that the mind feels is cyclical initially it starts feeling something it will stay for some time then it goes away 
learn to ignore your emotions as well. And when you ignore the questions, when you ignore the emotions, then you really start distancing yourself from the mind. And then because of the help of the intellect, when the awareness learns to stand by itself, unattached with either the intellect or the mind. Remember the intellect, we should only have one piece of knowledge. Remain as awareness away from the mind. Remain as awareness away from the mind. That's it. Intellectual knowledge that the intellect tries to give you is also part of the mind. The intellect should only hold one knowledge. Center yourself. Center yourself. Center yourself. Ignore the mind. Center yourself. Empty the mind. Center yourself. That's the intellect within me constantly reminding me. Empty your mind. Center yourself. Now let's tackle the mind. If you are experiencing a certain emotion, which means you were unaware for the thought to arise and you have taken up the thought and now the thought has turned into a desire. The desire was never fulfilled. That's why you have an emotion right now. So if you are already feeling, let's say, sad, depressed, flustered, jealous, or whatever the emotion may be, angry, it means you have already gone a little far off from the center. At that point, you really have to, if you have practiced centering yourself, when you are perfectly at ease, then your practice will yield some fruit when you have gone off center. If you've never practiced centering yourself, then don't expect that if you are so off center, you will center and you will come right back. It will take some time because the energy is already pulled in one direction, which is why it is absolutely so, so, so important to practice centering ourselves when everything is hale and healthy. When you are healthy, when everything surrounding you is conducive to practice, that's the time to practice the most. Because there are, there are times in our lives wherein we, we feel off-center. Whenever we feel off-center, if we have practiced enough, that spiritual wealth, that's what Swamiji calls it, the spiritual wealth, spiritual treasure, will help us come back to the center. But if we've never practiced being center, then you're like, okay, Anu said, I can come back. Let me see. I'm feeling really angry and agitated. Let me see if I can come back. It's going to be, it's going to be hard because that's something you have not practiced. So although it seems like such a silly practice to do, breathe out, center yourself, it is the most potent practice because you are willfully remaining as pure consciousness or pure awareness. You are willfully detaching the mind from, from your awareness because awareness mixed up with the mind is bondage. Awareness standing by itself is mukti. Wherein the mind the contents of the mind don't make you go up and down. If the mind is empty, clear, only then the divinity will shine forth. So for your pure, so and that is the whole esoteric meaning of the picture wherein Lord Krishna with the five senses and Arjun in the back. So Arjun is our awareness, the jivatma, our awareness. Our awareness, if it's standing alone, it's one with Paramatma. Our awareness covered with the mind is darkness. So the mind needs to be detached, detached, detached. And the way to do it is ignoring, ignoring, ignoring the mind. We all are so good at ignoring people. We all have ignored people sometime in our lives. We've all had some person who is just a real pain and we've ignored them. It's just like that. Your mind will come up with great questions. Ignore. Trust me, they're not important. None of those questions are true. As I said, it's not like bhakti ki parakashtha. The ultimate state of bhakti is you will have no questions. 
you will be left with exhaustive amount of answers but there will be no questions and that state comes by first ignoring the questions of the mind oh i have a question about ignore oh i think what about ignore don't even let the mind complete if it has already completed just tell you know i don't know you can figure it out yourself but this hankering after answers that's when the game is on that's when the friend is back just think about it that way just a friend that you want to really not hang out with keeps coming back if you allow if you entertain the questions the chat is on the lunch is on the shopping is on the greed is on the the critique the judgments about other people everything is on because all that resides in the mind so the quickest way for purification of the mind is ignoring it ignoring whatever it brings forth ignore that's why breathe out when you breathe out you willfully say to yourself i'm emptying my mind of whatever it has gotten in empty your mind send to yourself let's go ahead and do that be aware of where you are and be aware of the mind that's it it only takes 5 to 6 seconds but done throughout the day try meditating at the end of the night at the end of the day if you have practiced this exhaustively that night's meditation is going to be pure bliss you know your mind will bring about images ignore oh this image came that no matter how divine remember it can use the friend can use spiritual knowledge to to trap you it will say oh you know in my meditation today i saw this i saw that oh so great so look how did that come the game is on the mind's games are so subtle you have to be astute you have to be extremely aware to know what's going on and that comes in stages it's not like right after the satsang you will know exactly what the mind is doing sometimes you'll catch the mind after you have caught on to a thought gone far beyond with that thought and now have ended up in an emotion which is okay know that you're off center all that needs to be done is being aware awareness is like that lamp of light no matter how dark that room has been and for how long it has been dark it doesn't matter you walk in there with light the room is lit awareness is just that light the light doesn't have to do anything once it enters the dark room the light doesn't have to stretch it out its arms start spreading the rays here there it just has to be so know that there is nothing that needs to be done you just have to be aware just be aware what the mind is doing that's it you don't have to act on it you don't have to chastise yourself oh i can't believe i'm thinking so much the game is on feelings of guilt these are all you know feelings emotions these are all end product of a thought being you being unaware of a thought so since the journey is from gross to subtle today we will only talk about ignoring emotions and ignoring questions if you are feeling sad take a moment take a deep breath center yourself you're still feeling sad do it a couple more times it hasn't worked that is when swami ji talks about using positive distraction he says if you have if you were unaware to drop the thought as it arose and if it has already turned into an emotion then you cannot just use a breath and come right back at that time you have to use some kind of positive distraction 
So if you find yourself feeling jealous, feeling angry, feeling sad, depressed, extremely agitated at that time or guilt, extreme amount of guilt, oh, I can't believe I did that. I'm such a bad person. All this is total BS of the mind that we have gotten into. So at that time, use some kind of positive distraction, any positive distraction, which is why some, some books are like the book of faith. It's one of the best positive distractions. You're feeling flustered, you're feeling, you know, there are, first of all, it's not just knowledge, it's stories. Read a story. Read about how one of the devotees, you know, read about someone's experience there. And then that could be a positive distraction to come back to the center. Or you could listen to a bhajan. I mean, you have to come up with what is the best positive distraction for you. And trust me, I, it's not like I have ignored the mind so much that I have no mind. The game is still on, but I keep ignoring it. I keep ignoring it. My son, he likes to play outside. So while I'm in, he says, okay, I'm going to ride my bike outside. He'll go. As soon as he's gone in exactly 10-15 minutes, the mind comes back. Oh, I wonder if he's safe. If I'm not alert, then I'll start feeling fear. Oh my God, I hope he's okay. Let me go check and then I'll act on it. No. But if I'm aware, breathe in, breathe out, just be. Center yourself. Center, center, center. Because it's just, the mind, it just wants to create fear. Oh, what if this happens? Oh, what if that happens? Drop, 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 drop it. Center yourself, drop it, center yourself. Which is why it's so important to constantly monitor what am I thinking, how am I feeling? Even if you cannot do what am I thinking, start with how am I feeling? You should, you should feel calm, peaceful all the time. Not even extremely happy. If you hear some news and you're extremely happy about it, you're off center. Because happiness, there is sadness. Anything that has an opposite, you are in the, you're off center. So if you find yourself extremely happy, center yourself. If you're so happy that you cannot center yourself, distract yourself. Read something. Listen to something. Remember that Shanta Bhav is what that center is. How does the center feel? It feels Shant. It feels peaceful. So strive to hold on to that feeling of joy and peace within. There is actually no English word to the word Anand. That is how you need to feel within. Anand. The state of just being. You're just being. The mind is not coming back and saying, hey, what happens about this? What happens about that? Remember what happened then? What will happen tomorrow? None of that. So know that the mind, the friend wants to come back to you. The friend wants to be your best friend. But this journey that you have taken up, you have to, you have to just be. And the intellect is your best friend, constantly reminding you, hey, drop the mind, center yourself. Drop the mind, center yourself. So when you hear from within, let's center ourselves, know your intellect is rising. All these days, you were never listening to the intellect. But now, you started to listen to the intellect. Empty your mind, center yourself. No matter what kind of BS is going on in the mind, know for a fact, it's not important, it's totally untrue, it's not relevant. If right now, if I'm doing the satsang and I'm speaking, the mind that has learned the language is being used to speak. Apart from that, if the mind sits and judges, how many people are here for the satsang? Are they even listening? Is someone sleeping? That's it. The game is on. So if you, whatever work we are doing, the mind needs to be fully involved in that work. If, and I, trust me, I catch myself many, many, many times a day 
wherein I'll be working on a patient and my mind will be somewhere else. Then I have to like, okay, drop it. No matter what you're thinking, it's useless. It's useless. Drop it, drop it, drop it. Center yourself. Center yourself. No matter how fancy, no matter how extremely clever the question may be, drop it. Because till the time the game is on, you cannot experience bliss. Bliss is only when you, you, when I say you, it's like pure awareness. When you are just being by yourself. The mind and the intellect are the tools. The mind is there to use in the transactional world. The mind is there to act as a dentist. The mind is there to work on cases. The mind is there to drive the car. The mind is there to go shopping. The mind is there to do the transactions. The mind is there to speak. That's it. To learn the language and use the language. The guiding force is the awareness. The awareness performs everything in the world using the mind and the intellect. The intellect constantly guiding. Empty the mind. Be centered. The mind completely empty of its own thoughts. And if I want to learn painting, I'll teach the mind. This is how you hold the brush. This is how you paint. These are the colors. This is how you mix. This is how you blend. Fine. But when I'm driving, if the mind is telling me, oh, this is how you blend, this is, there's a problem. That's when I have to empty my mind, center myself. Empty my mind, center myself. So know for a fact, which is why Swamiji says, learn to talk to the mind. Don't think you are the mind. You are not the mind. Mind is a tool that has gone rogue. Mind is that friend that you need to straighten up. Mind is that friend, association with whom you always end up feeling jealous. You always have self-doubt. You always negate your, your own goodness. The mind says, no, you're not good. Look at that person. That person is better. No, you don't look good. Look, that person looks better. Oh, your dress is no good. Look, that person's dress is better. Know what the mind is doing because that is what mind is filled with. If you need to purify that mind, it starts with being meditative all day. That is what I sent on the group, the path to divinity, second part. You have to watch it, master's words. He says it is, for, as a householder, it is not possible for you, it is not practical for you to meditate 6-10 hours a day and hold a full-time job and keep everyone happy in the house. It's just not possible. So what is the best case out? The best case is to be meditative all day. Which is what we're trying to do. Constantly centering yourself. The intellect saying, hey, empty the mind, center yourself. No matter what's going on in the mind, it's total lies. Remember, you cannot search for the truth. You remember, I had, you know, there was a time I, was, I had become a serious seeker, a true aspirant. All these labels I had put myself, I was just, the mind's game was on. That was the mind playing the spiritual card. Look, I'm spiritual too. Let's do the spiritual journey together. Let's discuss spiritual stuff together. No, it doesn't happen. This journey, you have to do it yourself, which means you have to learn to stand alone as your true self. Those two years with the books and I don't know what all I was cooking up, the game was on. The mind was like, okay, let me fool you into knowing you're doing this, some spiritual journey. It's just, I was the whole time I was with my mind. It's when I started dropping the mind, that's when my journey actually went somewhere. And as I said, this, this fountain of knowledge that I have, the fountain of wisdom that I have within, is just two lines. The ultimate attainment is the refuge of the Divine Mother. And the second thing, no matter what I do, where I go, at any point of time, I'm guided only by the Divine Mother. That's it. That's, and that's how I lead my life in absolute 
no worry, no anxiety free, open for anything and everything. Because my ultimate refuge is her. Apart from this, I truly don't know anything. This I tell you from the bottom of my heart, with utmost sincerity. There is nothing else to know actually. This is the ultimate knowledge. So the presence that I keep talking about, the presence and the personality. Personality is the mind. Oh, I'm jealous. I'm, I'm scared. What will happen? Okay, this constantly in a state of ups and downs. Remember, the deep ocean is the pristine awareness that you are. The top part with many waves, that's the mind. So the mind also is a form of the Divine Mother. Don't feel bad about ignoring the contents of the mind. The contents is all our creation. It, it's, it's not needed. Khali dar pantha ye man mera Bas gaya roop isme tera so till the time kora kagas tha ye manne, till the time you don't empty your mind, you're not going to feel divine love. It's going to be very hard. If you're already experiencing divine love, there is some amount of emptying that's already been done. So empty your mind, make it a kora kagas, an empty mind, and then write mother's name on it. Make it clean like a mirror, and then see the form of the Divine Mother in it. And you know that song is so beautiful. It has Falashruti also. What happens if I make my mind completely empty? What happens if I make my mind clean as the mirror? Then it says, Koi dush man tha ye man mera Ban gaya me chake tera it was, it was an enemy and now it has become a friend. So we have, to, we have to learn to ignore the mind. And this only comes when you take it up as a mission for the next seven days. You constantly have to ignore, ignore, ignore. Initially, you may not be able to catch thoughts because they are very subtle when a thought will come, when you will catch on to that thought, when that thought will eventually become a desire and when you will act on it but not get the result, then you'll end up in, a, in, a, in an emotion. My, by then you might be able to catch up to it. Okay, now I'm feeling, I'm not feeling peaceful, which means I'm off center. So it's not important which thought you caught on to and how you reached there. It doesn't matter, know for a fact just being aware that I'm off center. At that time, you can use japa, you can use prayer, you can use books, you can use bhajans, you can use songs, you can use comedies, whatever it is, bring yourself back. Bring yourself back. You know, I watch, um, I follow this thing on Instagram, it's um, Seinfeld. It's just comedy, it's a comedy show. And if there were times when I used to be far off from the center and nothing used to work, then I would just play one of the episodes, watch and laugh, laugh, laugh. And then before I knew it, I was back in the center. So use whatever it is that may work for you. Don't try to use spiritual knowledge at that time. It might not work because the mind is already agitated and is like, I don't want to listen to any, your spiritual friend at this time. So use whatever it is that you can use. Just two things. Center yourself as much as possible when you're peaceful. That's going to work the best. So when you're not at peace, you're able to center yourself. You know, the mind will use all kinds of cards to come back. That friend will use everything. The friend will someday call and say, how is your son doing? How is his school doing? I really want to come see him. I wonder how much he has grown. And then you fall into that trap again. So no matter what, what the mind is bringing, bringing to your attention, know for a fact, not needed.
not needed you need to drop it be centered because the mother knows what needs to happen right now, right now later and what has happened in the past she is trikal darshi which is why three, she has three eyes which sees past present and future so that pure awareness is supreme intelligence being in that pure awareness you will know at any point of time what to do your mind need not come and tell you oh remember this happened last last week and then this is what you did maybe this is what you need to do drop the mind be centered you will know what to do and this is something you have to practice to experience i cannot tell you and when my son who is just 7 year old can practice you can imagine how simple this practice is any one of us can practice it is just do i want it or no if you want it put your heart and soul in this practice let the intellect continuously guide no matter what's going on in the mind drop it the mind will use so many great things it will use family cards it will say oh are you not worried about the health of your so and so your mom your dad your husband your child think about it dwell on it be fearful what will what if something happens to them think about it and then that's it the game is on the game is on do you really think you, the the awareness or the divine mother within doesn't know what's best for the child or what's best for the father or the mother or the husband she knows it all it's just the lack of trust in the pristine awareness that you are then the mind will sometimes use oh what's going to happen at work today are you not worried what if you're late what if the patient says this what if this happens what if that happens that's it you're the game is on as soon as you feel anything drop it you should only feel shant peaceful within this is all the mind does it will continuously keep giving you fear it will continuously keep giving you guilt you know you're no good look at others they are so much better look they do so much you don't do anything know what needs to be done and just do it you know uh, the thing that nike says just do it it is the ultimate philosophical knowledge it's the ultimate spiritual knowledge just keep doing what you're supposed to do that's it moment to moment don't think about it because if you think about it then the game is on then the mind will say do you really should you really do this maybe it's not needed maybe you are someone great maybe you don't need to do this whatever needs to be done just do it use the mind just do it it's thinking about it causes procrastination if you need to go to the gym just go if you need to pick up some weights just pick up if you need to do some bench presses just do it should i do it i don't feel like it i don't know maybe i'll do it tomorrow that's it the game is on that's when the intellect has to come in and say drop the mind center yourself just do it drop the mind center yourself just do it i have to cook now should i really cook or should we just go out i don't know who's going to cook i don't know why i have to cook so much other people don't cook why can't my husband cook what is all the game is on this is how the game is on the mind is continuously blabbering 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 once you start ignoring if you truly practice what i'm telling you in one week it will become so quiet it will become so quiet maybe next week you will say i don't even need to come to satsang i'm enjoying this quietude the mind will use all kinds of cards initially it will use useless cards oh let's go shopping let's go buy this let's go look for more let's go eat more let's go do more and then you're like no those are things you can easily ignore no i don't need it in anything i have enough shoes i have enough clothes i have enough of this i don't need it fine then the mind says okay let me use another card and it says hey how's your family what about your husband's health how is he doing are you not worried why don't you go on google and look up his health condition maybe why don't you call this friend and find out what they are doing the game is on then let's say you ignore that also then it says look at yourself how you have become you know look at the other person they look so much more beautiful you don't look as beautiful the way you dress what's wrong with you 
and then the game is on. The game of the mind, it will use anything and everything under the sun for, to come back. Your job is to keep using the intellect's guidance and be centered. Breathe out, center. Breathe out, center. Every time you breathe out, breathe out with the conviction that you're emptying the mind. Because the practice, the more you do it, in a few weeks time, when you breathe out, automatically you will empty the mind. And it has to be done almost every time. Because the mind keeps accumulating stuff. It watches some movie, it watches some beautiful dresses worn by some people and it's like, oh, I wish I could wear that. I wish I looked like that. The game is on. Continuously keep, keep, keep. And before you start anything new, like right now we're doing the satsang. After this, I'll go cook breakfast. Before I cook breakfast, I'll empty my mind. Because I don't want to operate out of the memory. I want to operate out of pure awareness. The presence of the Divine Mother is that pure awareness. I want to operate out of the presence. And Swamiji says that do everything as a divine act. How do you do everything as a divine act? By doing Japa, Shri Matri Namaha, Shri Matri Namaha, Shri Matri Namaha. No, by what he means is when you operate out of your center and not out of your memory, which is why it's important to, before you start anything new, center yourself. When you are centered, you are operating out of that center. You are, it becomes a divine act. If after the satsang, I straight away go, start making breakfast, then my memory is still in the satsang. Oh, remember what I said in the satsang? Oh, remember what that person asked? I'm still there. After, let's say, I'm, I'm done with the breakfast, I go out. Now, oh, I still have to clean the dishes in the kitchen. I left that there, there. I don't know if I switched off the gas. Then I'm again in the memory. So when I'm working out of memory, I'm working in the mind. I'm being in the mind. What Swamiji is saying is do everything as a divine act. No matter what you take up, let that come out from the center. Let that be motivated, inspired from the pure awareness. Because that pure awareness is the Divine Mother's presence and the presence knows past, present and future. So whatever springs forth from within is the way to do it. The more you trust your center, the more your center will communicate with you. Right now, because the presence is so feeble and the mind is like a monster, now slowly the mind has to shrink and the presence has to become magnanimous. That is what is Udyat Bhanu Sahastrabha. So when mother's presence becomes that Udyat Bhanu Sahastrabha, Chatur Bahu Samanvita, then she holds your mind, your intellect, your likes, your dislikes, she holds them all. And then when you perform task in the world, then the mind is used when it's supposed to be used. The intellect is used when it's supposed to be used. The likes and dislikes are held in mother's mother's hand so you're always equanimous in the face of life in the face of the events of life so but it all starts with udyat bhanu sahastrabha and for before udyat bhanu sahastrabha is devakarya samandit devakarya samudyata she rises her presence rises for the devas to perform the karya of the devas and to become the deva you have to be centered. So when you and I together get into this practice of emptying our mind, centering ourselves, emptying our mind, centering ourselves, she sees these efforts. And Deva Karya Sama Udyata. So for to perform the work of this Deva, you and I, she becomes Udyat Bhanu Sahastrava. And when her presence, her majesty's presence rises, as a thousand rising suns, then Raga Sarupa Pashadhya Krodha Karam Kushojwala. Then all the likes and dislikes, because they are from the mind, right? I don't like this, I like this. All the likes and dislikes disappear and you become equanimous. 
ರಾಗಸ್ವರೂಪ ಪಾಶಾಢ್ಯ ಕ್ರೋಧಾಕಾರಾಂಕ ಶೋಜ್ವಲ ಮನೋರೂಪೇಕ್ಷು ಕೋದಂಡ ಪಂಚ ತನ್ಮಾತ್ರ ಸಾಯಕ ದೆನ್ ಶಿ ಹೋಲ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಬೋ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಫೈವ್ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಸೊ ದೆನ್ ದ ಚಾರಿಯಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಲೈಫ್ ಜೀವಾತ್ಮ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಚಾರಿಟಿಯರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೈಡ್ಸ್ ಸೋ ಅರ್ಜುನ್ ರಿಲೀಸಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಆ್ಯರೋಸ್ ಕಿಲ್ಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಕಿಲ್ಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಓನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ನಾವು ಗೈಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ದಟ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಅವೇರ್ನೆಸ್ ಸೊ ಈವನ್ ದ ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಿಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಅ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಇಮರ್ಜ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಮೆಮರಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಸೊ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಎಮ್ ಟಿ ಯುವರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಯುವರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಪವರ್ ಆಫ್ ನೌ ದಟ್ ಎಕರ್ ಟೋಲಿ ಟಾಕ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆ ಇಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ದ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮನ್ ಎಲ್ಸಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ದೇ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಲಿ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ಸ್ ಬಿಹೇವಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಟಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸಿಚುವೇಷನ್ಸ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಸಿಚುವೇಷನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಫಾಲ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸ್ಪೌಸಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಯುವರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಡೆಡ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಯುವರ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸಿಚುವೇಷನ್ಸ್ ದ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಸಿಚುವೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಬಿ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಚ್ ಅ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ go ahead breathe out center yourself when you are centered continue to breathe don't hold your breath be aware of what the mind is doing it's probably not doing anything right now because you are so aware divinity swami ji talks about he he narrates this poem by baba gulesha and you will see he says this person has read everything but he has never read himself he has gone to all kinds of places but he has never gone within and this is reading your own self knowing that your own true self is mixed up so badly with the mind 
So this is where your true self-discovery begins. Your discovery that you are not this fearful mind. You are not this jealous mind. You are not this self-doubting mind. You are something beyond that. And that is going beyond the mind. If you want to experience divine love, the mind has to be light. It needs to float in love. You know, there is this song, Pehla Nasha, from Joji Tavahi Sikandar. If you watch the video, right, that girl is constantly wanting to fly. Because that's how you feel in love. But to feel that way, your mind has to be light, empty. So the more you empty your mind, the more you will discover your true self. And that is the path of self-discovery. That is self-realization. Who am I? I am not this mind. I am not this intellect. I just am. So instead of just focusing on 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening, do it all day. Experience this joy of being all day. This is all I have to share today. So we will end the satsang and we will have a Q&A. So we have two chats. Oh, I'm so sorry. Echo Horethi Awaz. We are about to move. I think that's why Pura Saman Khali Kar Diya Hai. Anyway, question and answer. Right now you can, we can, we can talk about the questions. We don't need to ignore them. <laughs> because the mother is answering. Rita, go ahead. Uh, like, when we wake up and we are just, you know, like uh, in the state of just being, as you said, you know, there are some microseconds where you might be distracted by some kind of a subtle thought. So during that time, can we just hold on to mother's face or something to just prolong that state of, you know, neutrality? Uh, I don't know whether I... That's a, that's a great question. That is your mind coming back in action. Yeah, so just, I mean, just to, you know, avoid that, because that's a little easy for me to focus on mother's face and, you know, to just prolong that, well, like when you try to center yourself and within a few microseconds, you know, some way, some very big, very small, subtle thoughts, they just are there in the back of the mind and you can make out that, you know, they're going to come up. So... Just to avoid that, like, would it be a good idea to do this? You know what? No, because avoiding is blocking. It's like, you know, let's say you're watching TV. I don't know, maybe I gave this example last time. You're watching TV, Arnab Goswami, many people screaming, headlines going off. Every, let everything go on. All you have, there are so many times you're in front of the TV, so much is going on, you're just not paying attention. You're just doing something else. So it's like that. Have the attitude that mind, no matter what you do, I'm not going to pay attention. I'm aware. I know you're thinking. I know you're bringing thoughts. I know you're bringing images. It's okay. After some time, remember, it starts with coarse thoughts. Then those coarse thoughts become subtle thoughts. Then subtle thoughts become images. Images eventually disappear and then there will be nothing. It will come in stages. But if you try to stay if you try to empty your mind, center yourself and try to stay there longer, word of caution, the mind will come back with some great ideas. Oh, how about we do this? Oh, how about we do that? No, that is not the goal of the practice. The goal of the practice is before you take up any new task, empty your mind. Center yourself, continue with the task. Now, at the end of the day when you sit down to meditate, at that point, you can do a little bit 
of just being, little bit of mantra japa, little bit of meditation on the form, going back little bit to just being, little bit to mantra japa and little bit to form. That's okay because that is seated practice. But during this practice, all you need to do, breathe out, empty your mind, center yourself for a few seconds and then start your new task. Because what's going to happen with this is slowly over a period of time, and I'm not saying years or months, just days, your new default will change to the presence versus the personality. And then what you will experience is whatever task you take up gets completed effortlessly, gets completed peacefully. The people you interact with become peaceful. There will be no more clashes. And then what happens, you start making your life conducive towards meditation, towards self-realization. Because right now, the life situation is not conducive. People are angry at you, you are angry at people, people are not doing their work, you know, things are not happening as planned. So that is a very unconducive environment for you to meditate at the end of the day or for your self-discovery. So with this practice, we don't want you to be there for a long time. We just want you to enter into multiple tasks, which could be con new conversations, texting, cooking, between patients. You're just centering yourself and you're operating out of that center to be guided, to lead your life in a conducive way. So that everything, everything happens smoothly for you, effortlessly. So when that happens, most of the friction that happens during the day is disappears. So most of the time, your energy is conserved because we lose so much energy just leading our day-to-day -day life that we have nothing left to send up the spine. So this practice is to bring, bring your day into a very smooth, flowing river. So your energy is stored up. So at the end of the day or at the end of seven days or at the end of 15 days or at the end of six months, if you decide, let me try today meditation, you have this potential energy stored up that you're able to break through. Does that make sense, Rita? Thank you so much. That was wonderfully answered. Perfect. Anyone else? Any question you may have, just go ahead. I mean, Rita's question was really, really beautiful. So don't think you need to drop the question right now. Right now we need to speak about the questions. Anyone? We have someone. Thank you, love. <laughs> Mira? Mira, you have a question? Yes, you are. That's because, we are aware, because we are aware that they'll only talk clothes, jewelry, or career, or some house, some, some stupid. <laughs> good question, Mira. Good question. And let me tell you that question is coming from the mind, right? What should I do with these people? Should I drop them or should I not? Trust your center to guide you. 
योग रतो वा भोग रतो वा संग रतो वा संग विहीना यस्य ब्रह्मणे रमते चित्त नंदति नंदति नंदत्येव सो यू माइट बी एट द मॉल शॉपिंग विद देम इफ यू आर सेंटर्ड यू आर सेंटर्ड बिफोर गोइंग टू द मॉल इफ यू आर सेंटर्ड यू हैड अ चॉइस डू आई वांट टू गो और डू आई नॉट वांट टू गो लेट्स से यू डिडंट एक्सरसाइज दैट एट दैट टाइम एंड यू वेंट नाउ यू आर एट द मॉल दे आर गोइंग क्रेजी बाइंग स्टफ यू नो योर क्लोजेट्स आर ऑलरेडी फुल ऑफ स्टफ but you are centered let the center guide you what to do there is no rule that i can tell you okay mira if you have materialistic friends ignore them all delete them from your phone that's called a a very um, dogmatic view but the presence is not dogmatic the presence is so flexible like a flowing river no matter where you go let the presence guide you what you need to do so whether you are with your satsangi friends your professional satsangis or you are with your uh, materialistic friends at a mall the key is to be centered because that center can guide you whether you are in a satsang whether you are in front of swami ji or whether you are with friends with friends at the mall so the key is be centered before you pick up the task be centered then you have a choice and that's why ultimate awareness gives you ultimate freedom little bit of awareness gives you little bit of freedom a little more awareness gives you a little more freedom it all depends how much freedom you want you want ultimate freedom to decide who you want to be how you want to be who you want to hang out with become like swami ji ultimate freedom he chooses how he wants to be who he wants to be who he wants to meet what he wants to speak there is no bandhan you and i on the other hand have some freedom because we have little bit aware so keep increasing let that center engulf your entire world everything will fall into place the friends that need not be there in your world will drop off automatically when when you are centered strongly your family and their behaviors will become conducive for your sadhana your work environment will become conducive towards your sadhana it all starts with you when i say you you me everyone that's what i meant so it all starts with being centered the more centered you are that center is not a is not a whole it's the whole it's not h o l e it's w h o l e so that center is is whole so experience and practice that center many 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 times during the day and then one fine day it will all be dropped off and trust me i had such friends who were dropped off who i was with for 20 years and then one fine day just dropped off now we hardly meet we hardly talk and it's all good but if she comes and if i were to meet her we're still good friends we still talk but the center always guides what what needs to be said we have one more question here when we drop everything is it okay to feel stupid oh it's the best it's the best feeling to be uh, ram prasad sen was a devotee of ma kali he has a poem that he wrote and he says oh ma i have lost my mind it starts with oh ma i have lost my mind it's the best feeling you know a child we think the child is stupid don't do that stupid stuff what are you doing you being stupid because we think we are smart the child is just being the child's mind is not developed he is just being so it's perfectly it's, it's the most blissful state to be to feel that oh my god i've lost my mind and i keep joking with rita all the time you still have not you still have not lost your mind it's the best thing and i really hope and wish and pray that all of you lose your mind very soon You can also type the questions in the chat window if you don't feel comfortable asking. And I'll be sure to send that uh, poem on the Divine Mother group. Oh ma, I have lost my mind. Anyone else?
no one okay so let's go ahead varsha you are you have a question unmute yourself let me unmute you go ahead varsha go ahead uh, We can hear you. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you, Anuji. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, how to deal with uh, the same question uh, earlier asked someone? Uh, like, how to deal with very current people in job place or in home? Like, um, who cook? One cook. Uh, like, uh, uh, cook or they are very planning, plotting. So many things. Then, um, um, uh, I mean, how to deal with them or how to uh, get centered? I got your question. I got, I got your question. Ha, ha. Thank you. So, the question is how to deal with cunning, plotting, scheming people who are constantly, just go in the way, Shadiantri. You know, they're constantly cooking up something against you. They could be either part of your extended family yeah. at your workplace. So how to deal with them? So the answer lies in the question, how to deal with them. Do you really want to deal with them, Varsha? First question. Okay. Some. Um, so hear me out first. Okay. If you say, yes, I know I want to deal with them, then no that if you are centered, let's say two people are having an altercation, right? It's personality versus personality. Okay? Yeah. If there is personality versus presence, the altercation ends automatically because there is no one to fight with. So when you are centered and when you become the presence, when you are guided by the presence, the personality in front of you might want to plot and scheme and cook up something against your personality. But at that moment, you are in the presence. There is no personality to fight with. Remember, these things are not like magic. They're not going to happen in a day. But if you trust the presence, because these people who are cunning, scheming, if they're part of your family or extended family, they're part of your world it's going to take tremendous amount of presence to melt their personalities. And that's the first thing. Second thing, Varsha, know that we all have certain amount of energy that has been given to us. Let's say when I wake up in the morning, I have 100 points of energy, right? Now that 100 points of energy has been given for me to use it the way I feel, I feel like using. If I use 50 points of that, that energy in dealing with, because that's what I've made the choice. I've made the choice. I'm going to deal with these people who are planning, scheming, plotting against me. I'm going to fall into their trap, feel bad. I'm going to be like, okay, what can I do in return? So I have decided to deal with them. So 50 points of my energy I have used for to deal with them. After dealing with them, it's exhausting dealing with such people. Another 25 points are used in feeling in making myself feel okay then i'm left with 25 points but still i have to do my worldly work so i'll, I'll do my cooking whatever you know working by the end of the day i'm exhausted now who wants to sit for meditation and japa i don't because i'm exhausted so it's about this is one day the second day i wake up and i say i have 100 points of energy how do i want to use it do I want to use it for my own self-discovery? Or do I want to use even one point of this energy towards these people? And I say, no, I don't want to use any energy for these people. They can be who they choose to want to be. They can be who they choose to be. They can be how they want to be. It's up to them. My choice is constantly breathe out, center, center myself. Breathe out, center myself. Whatever I need to do, I'll keep doing. I'll try to avoid interaction with them as much as possible. Bare minimum I'll do because I'm still a sapling. I'm growing. I need to put a fence around me so I can grow into this tree. Once I'm a tree, I'll give some shade for, for them 
to experience the joy of being. But right now I'm a sapling. I need to protect myself. So we will always be surrounded by cunning, plotting, scheming people. I was too. And then one fine day it dawned on me. What the hell am I doing with my energy? Using it to, to tackle these people when there is no need to tackle these people. You know, they say how to deal with stress. Do you really want to deal with stress? Just drop that damn stress and be joyous. Why you want to deal? When you say how to deal with these people, it say, some part of you says, I want to deal with them. I say, why you want to deal with them? Take a hard look at your day and see how much you can cut down. How much ever you can cut down, cut down. How much ever you cannot cut down, deal with it being in the presence. And then one fine day, you will know that you are not dealing with them anymore. You are so involved in your own self-discovery, their presence. Like for example, right now Meera was speaking. While Meera was speaking, we were all intently listening to Meera. But there was some background noise going on, right? What did we do? We just ignored that background noise and listened to what Meera had to say. It, now it is, it is like, you know, saying, no Meera, stop all the background noise. I don't want to hear it. Well, that's your choice. What do you want to hear? You want to listen to Meera's question or do you want to listen to the background? It's totally your choice. So, first thing, make up your mind. What do you want to do? Do you want to deal with these people? Because these people have a board written on, the, on their heads. Hum nahi sudhrenge. Do you really want to use your, your energy for these people? No. No. So then comes how to deal with them, right? The, de the way to deal with them is like ignore. People are planning, scheming against you at work. You know what you need to do at work. If your job, for example, let's say, is to take these boxes from this aisle and put them in that aisle. That is your job. Varsha, you know your job at work is to take these boxes from this aisle and put them in that aisle. In between, someone is scheming, someone is dropping a box on you, someone is doing this, someone is pouring some water so you may slip and fall. Be careful and keep doing your work. Focus on what you need to do because it is all about you. It is not about them. So focus on what you need to do at any moment and do it while being centered. Ignore them, ignore them, ignore them. It is not worth your precious, precious energy. Your energy should be for your self-discovery. It is such a great blessing that you have a human body. It is yet another great, great blessing you have a Sadhguru in your life. Yes. And it is the greatest blessing that you want to know your true self. With this three deadly combination, you can tackle anything or anyone. So you are just taking boxes from this aisle moving it to that aisle. In between they are spilling water, you are walking carefully. In between they are throwing more boxes, you are just dodging them. Do what you need to do. Conserve your energy while walking this path of self-discovery, centering yourself constantly. Yes. Varsha, did that thank answer your question? And if it didn't, yeah. please tell me. No, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, we have another question here. When we try to be centered, present and guided, is it normal to feel distanced and not blend in in social settings? Absolutely, because social settings is all personalities. Bunch of personalities, walking, chit-chatting. It's like bunch of minds that you've tried to ignore. In other words, being perceived as if I'm boring to society. <laughs> I'm the most boring person you're talking to. Despite feeling contented within. It's not about others. It's about what how you feel. You know, uh, every time I go for presentations at conferences, my husband always tells me, Anu, you're very serious when you do presentations. Put some funny slides in between. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> because he thinks I'm very serious. But you know, the fun that I have, you know, the childlike attitude that I have gained by dropping the mind, it's so much fun all the time. Before, you know, I was like, oh, I should not watch movies. I should not watch TVs. I should not do this because I'm a spiritual aspirant, because I'm a serious seeker, all that blah, 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 BS. None of that. Now I watch movies. Just last night we were watching Mission Impossible 5. You know, watch movies. Now I watch movies, go out, 
do anything and everything i feel like but that is coming from the center so yes you will go through a period wherein you become boring because you feel like i've become a spiritual aspirant now i'm a serious seeker i'm a moderate seeker i'm a i'm a great meditator all these stupid labels you'll put on yourself and you become someone else and then slowly this process initial process of becoming boring will eventually make you the most fun person but till that happens you have to protect yourself so keep ignoring keep becoming more boring because from that boring boring depths will emerge this really fun absolutely flexible person who is willing to do anything and everything to have fun that's it yogarato va bhogarato va sangarato va sangavihina whether you are in meditation or whether you are at the movies or whether you are at the dance club you are yasya brahmani ramate chitta you are you are always centered and from that center you dance out of this being in the being in the joy of that center you sing being in the joy of that center you perform actions from that joy that springs from within so yes you're going to be boring emotions next question emotions are emotions are minds chat chatting but to being emotional for divine mother is mind chat or its real emotion should we ignore it or should we flow in that emotion that is the only emotion that's allowed <laughs> let's put it that way um and right now those you know those emotions are also initially from pain of separation where are you mother i don't feel you i don't feel your presence where are you and i went through that those pains of separation will make you cry will make you wail in pain and then eventually those emotions will also calm down because then you won't feel the pain of separation from her you'll feel her presence constantly and then the presence is just overwhelming and then you talk about the divine mother and then you just want to just just cry some days you feel like i just want to grow some wings and just fly because you feel so much in love and that is those are divine emotions divine love that's what swami ji talks in one of the one of the videos saying emotions you should never put up uh you should never close them but of course those emotions mean the divine emotions because love is a divine emotion so when you feel it you feel it if i could get a summary of this session the summary of this session is mind and intellect are tools for you to use don't become identified with the contents of the mind and feel that you are the mind if you feel sad tell my mind is feeling sad i am aware that my mind is feeling sad whatever be the reason and center yourself and how do you center yourself it's as simple as you take a couple of deep breaths and you just be and when you be you just breathe normally before you take up any new task center yourself take some deep breaths center yourself you never have to close your eyes for centering yourself you can center yourself with your eyes closed you can center yourself walking you can center yourself driving you can center yourself throughout a conversation many many times because this is something happening within breathing in breathing out is happening anyway so when you breathe out let's say right now we are having a conversation center that is the that is the crux of the practice from that center that center is the presence of the divine mother let the presence guide you moment to moment how to lead your life what to say what to do what not to do how to do everything and that is the ultimate knowledge that mother divine's refuge is the greatest attainment and her guidance is is the prime force that drives your life apart from that there is nothing else that needs to be known or discovered when i become emotional it's difficult to turn to center 
when you feel emotional you know one thing is tears are the most precious thing most precious shed them only for the divine mother make a promise to yourself that your tears will never shed for anything worldly or any other person let those tears only arise for the divine mother second if you feel emotional if you already you know off center you have to use a positive distraction for me the best positive distraction is seinfeld it's it's a comedy show and i just watch snippets of it i laugh and i'm okay sometimes when i'm off center which i don't get so so much off center but if you get so off center read book of faith there are short stories read something from it if you're very off center om swami as we know him pick up some books still you don't feel like you you're back go for a walk or cook something good you have to figure out what you can do and just do it 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 will take few one or two tries and then you'll know how to center yourself back and remember how do you know you're off center if you're feeling anything except peace and love you're off center and if it is extreme happiness come back if it is extreme sadness come back if you're depressed come back you have to use some kind of positive distraction because now you're already off center if you are aware that oh wait i'm getting thoughts of fear center yourself drop the thoughts and then you are instantly you're back if you have already gone you've taken up that thought train and you have ended up at some abandoned station somewhere then you need to come back with some means and at that time you have to use positive distraction i hope that helped we have another session of this same thing coming up in one hour so i'll take your leave now om go ahead breathe out center yourself and being in that center as one all of us as one let's offer our deepest gratitude to the divine mother to our master who lovingly guided us during this session ओम सर्वे भवन्तु सुखिनः सर्वे संतु निरामयाः सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चित् दुःखभाग भवे असतो मा सद्गमय तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृतं गमय ओम पूर्णमदः पूर्णमिदं पूर्णा पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ Thank you divine mother I hope you all enjoy the rest of the week ignoring your mind and I hope you all lose your mind very very soon <laughs> Okay we'll end the meeting now